Good morning, everyone, and happy 4th. We hope you're enjoying a relaxing weekend with the ones that you love. If you're new here, we want to meet you. Just hit the connect button and fill out the quick form. We look forward to hearing from you. Get excited for the outdoor service happening next Sunday, July 11th at 10 a.m. Bring lawn chairs or a blanket and join us on the hillside behind the church. We can't wait. Remember, we're collecting donations that day too. New backpacks and back to school supplies for kindergarten through high school students. We're supporting We Care Eau Claire's summer back to school event. Check out our app for a supply list. After the outdoor service on July 11th, we have two more outdoor services planned on July 18th and the 25th both at 10 a.m. The rest of July is going to be super fun. Speaking of fun, Amy is here quick to talk about OneFest coming up. Hi Jacob Swell, I'm Amy and I am so excited that OneFest is going to be back again this year, July 23rd through the 25th. This is the annual Christian Music Festival held at the Northern Wisconsin State Fairgrounds in Chippewa Falls. This year, they are featuring over a dozen well-known artists. Ren Collective, Danny Goki, Micah Tyler, you don't wanna miss this. Jacob's Well is proud to sponsor this event again this year, and we're making it super easy to grab your tickets right here. Stop by the church office Monday through Thursday from nine to five, or stop by the Connection Center tent at our outdoor services on July 11th and 18th. You guys, One Fest is an awesome time to come together and worship God through music. Get your tickets, and we hope to see you at the fairgrounds July 23rd through the 25th. See you then. Thank you, Amy. Okay, guys, after July, we've got our big summer splash event on Sunday, August 29th. This is where we celebrate how God is moving in our church by doing outdoor baptisms in a big pool. There's lots of fun planned for the whole family too, like food trucks, a petting zoo, and hay rides. Don't miss this. If baptism is the next step in your spiritual journey, we encourage you to go to the baptism page and take the online baptism class. Then sign up to be baptized at Splash, and we'll get in touch with you with next steps. And finally, this summer, stay engaged in the gospel by listening to the Bible on the Dwell app. When you listen, you'll actually be surprised at what you've missed, even in familiar scriptures. The first step is to go to our summer reading plan page and accept the free Dwell gift subscription from Jacob's Well. Then start listening. One more note really quick. We need help painting in July. We're painting the hallways and rooms in our children's wing, and we could really use adult volunteers for this. If you love painting and want to help out, sign up on the Serve page. Okay, that's all for now. Let's get started with worship. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us from wherever you are this morning, whether you're at the cabin, you're on the lake, or you're at home. We are so thankful that you took some time out of your morning to join us. As you celebrate the 4th today, just be in prayer for our government leaders. Just take a few moments to just sit and quiet yourselves and be praying for those who are making decisions for our nation. As we worship today, I just wanna invite you guys to worship however that looks for you. Whether you're standing and you're singing in your living room or you're just sitting and you're reflecting on what's being sung and what's being said, whatever that looks like for you, invite the Holy Spirit to come into your space to draw near to you and make this moment beautiful. Holy Spirit, we invite you wherever we are, whether we're by ourselves in our living room or we're at a big family gathering watching together, Lord, I just pray that you make yourself known, you make yourself present. God, you are worthy of all of our praise. You are worthy of everything we have to give you. God, we love you and we praise you. In your name we pray, amen.
caught up in your presence and I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave oh I'm not here for Blessings. And Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. And I'm sorry. When I've just gone through the motions, I'm sorry. When I just sang another song, take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. And I'm sorry when I've come. God, that you're enough. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. I'm caught up in your presence, and I just want to see. I 
just want you and nothing else and nothing else and nothing else will do I just want you and nothing else and nothing else Nothing else will do I just want you and nothing else and nothing else nothing else will do I just want you and nothing else and nothing else that that would be our prayer. Lord, we would just desire more of you. That we would desire more of your presence. God, I pray as we celebrate this weekend that we can take a moment out of our days to just take you in. Take in your creation. Take in your beauty. Take in your holiness. God, you are worthy all of our praise. In your name we pray. Amen. to the manager. Happy 4th of July. Wherever you are, thank you for taking time to join Jacob's Well for worship this week. So what does the 4th of July mean to you? 
It's just time off of work, or maybe it's a chance to go camping or fishing, hang out with your friends or family. Does the fourth bring thoughts to mind about our country, our freedoms, our independence? This 4th of July, I would like to challenge you to examine your heart. Do you have pain and fear, disappointment or insecurities in your heart that seem to hold you back? Do feelings of anger or resentment or shame in your heart come out in harmful ways towards others? Real feelings lead to real behaviors. If we want to change those behaviors, we need to have a change of heart. And God is in the business of changing hearts. In John 8, 32, Jesus says, the truth will set you free. What if this 4th of July, you found true freedom in your heart? Let me pray. Father, as this message begins, I pray that your spirit will guide each of us and reveal the truth of your love so that in you, we may find true freedom. Amen. My name is Steve Hay, and I have the privilege of serving on staff as the care director. We are in the third week of our summer series on bullies. We know that bullies are not just part of the entertainment world, as you saw in that little video before I came on, but bullies are real. Bullies can be that person in your face. But bullies can also sometimes be that voice of lies that's in your head that tells you you're not enough. What is your bully story? For most of my adult career, I was a middle school teacher. After retiring, I went through a time of struggle trying to discern what God wanted me to do next. I felt drawn to a ministry area but did not have any specific training or a degree from seminary. After two years of wandering and wandering, God led me to an opportunity to enter into a chaplaincy training program at one of our local hospitals. In addition to an intense academic schedule, all of us in the program served full-time in the hospital. This would mean that daily we would go up and visit those patients who had been admitted, but also we would serve on-call shifts overnight in the building. The pager would go off into the middle of the night, and it meant that we had to respond to individuals and families who were in crisis. Could have been a tragic car accident. It could have been a heart attack. It could have been the death of a loved one. This was challenging on many levels. We were called to step into situations with confidence and a firm understanding of what our responsibilities were. But what happens when your internal voice gives you a different message? You don't know what you're doing. You're not important. Don't speak out. Don't stand out. Stay in the shadows. As one who grew up with strong perfectionistic tendencies, and a feeling that I needed to earn the approval through correctly done actions. In this new environment, with high expectations, I doubted myself. I was concerned I'd make a mistake, I'd say the wrong thing, I'd miss something that was important. My own thoughts became a bully in my head. Have words in your mind or those expressed by someone else held you back? To explore this question and to learn about God's desires for us, we're going through the story of the early life of David that's found in the Old Testament book of 1 Samuel. In our first week, Pastor Paul introduced the series by giving us a description of bullies and the tactics they use to create shame, fear, and intimidation, all done to achieve an outcome that they desired. Last week, Tim spoke about the young story of David, who was an unseen shepherd boy and was not noticed by any of the adults around him. 
But God saw in David a heart that was toward him. And he instructed Samuel to anoint him to be the next king of Israel. For today, David's story continues a few years later. Now he's probably in as close to his mid to his late teens. It was the time of war. The Philistines had gathered their forces against the Israelites led by King Saul. Each was camped on an opposing hill facing each other, but neither wanted to take the first step to attack the other. Into this standoff, a man by the name of Goliath entered jeering and taunting the Israelites. He was a huge man. Some think that he may be as tall as 10 feet and he had massive weaponry and armors. Each day for 40 days, he would come out and challenge the ranks of Israel to send a single man out to fight him one-on-one with a winner-take-all offer. Not surprisingly, there were no responses. Even Saul was paralyzed by his fear. Goliath, the bully, intimidated the rank and file. Fear gripped the men and doubts cast a long shadow of insecurity. In the army of Israel were David's three oldest brothers. To check on them and to provide some food, David's father, Jesse, sent him to check on his brothers. We pick up the story in chapter 17, verse 20. Early in the morning, David left the flock in the care of a shepherd, loaded up and set out as Jesse had directed. He reached the camp as the army was going to its battle positions, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines were drawn up their lines facing each other. David left his things with the keeper of supplies, ran to the battle lines and asked his brothers how they were. As a young man, David enters this scene as the army lines are being formed. Men are shouting. There's tension, energy in the air. But notice the responsibilities that David took and that before going to the front lines, David followed his father's directives. First off, he had left the sheep in the care of a shepherd and he gives the supplies to the keeper. Then David goes out and finds his brothers. In verse 23, it says, as he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, stepped out from his lines and shouted his usual defiance. And David heard it. Whenever the Israelites saw the man, they all fled from him in great fear. Being on the front lines, David witnessed firsthand the bravado and the energy and saw it melt away. With the presence of Goliath, he saw the fear of the men as they fled. Have you had to face a Goliath? How did you react? Psychologists today tell us that in threatening situations, our natural response is to fight or flight. Which do you typically do? Well, David followed the men back to their encampment. They have been taunted day after day. The men their leader saw and the God that they serve have been minimized by Goliath's words. Thoughts may race through their mind. You're not strong enough. You're not brave enough. Your God will not help you. But David provides a different perspective. In verse 26, David asked the men standing near him, What will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? David makes a true statement and reminds those listening that Goliath is not part of God's chosen people and that the army may be commanded by Saul but they are firmly part of the living army of God. There is a history there that all the men would know about. A time when God had been their God and they had been led by him and defeated enemy after enemy as the people of Israel entered the promised land. 
But not all who heard David's words appreciated them. In verse 28, when Eliab, that's David's oldest brother, heard him speaking with the men, he burned with anger at him and asked, why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. Eliab is the bully. He's using his words to attack his brother. Why have you come down here? Well, David knew he was there at the request of his father. But Eliab attempts to shame him, essentially saying, you don't belong here. Iliab minimizes and insults David's role by saying, with whom did you leave those few sheep? But David has watched over that flock for years. He has defended them against wild animals. In his absence, he has taken the responsible step of leaving them under the watchful eyes of another shepherd. Iliab continues, I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. Eliab is is degrading his own brother. He does not see his brother as God does. David's reminder that they should not live in fear because they have the living God falls on deaf ears. For 40 days, Eliab and the others had let the words of Goliath echo in their minds. They have forgotten about the way God has led and protected the people of Israel in the past. So how did David respond to his brother? Did he fight back? Did he take flight? He did neither. He says in verse 29, Now what have I done? Can't I even speak? You know, David could have countered his brother and verbally tried to fight him off. He could have internalized Eliab's words and negative thoughts could have been the spiral into insecurities and he'd run off back home. Instead, David defends himself by saying that he has not done or said anything wrong. And then he leaves the conversation. Have you been in a situation where you've had to face questioning about you or your responsibilities? Maybe you're the youngest in the family and experienced this from your own siblings. Maybe it was in the workplace. How did you respond to those situations? If you have been bullied, if you have been on the receiving end, words that shame or leave you feeling insignificant or unseen, please keep in your mind that there is a God that loves you. When we let those fears and insecurities swirl around in our mind, we are held back just like I was during that chaplaincy training. When the words attack you, there are many feelings that can arise. Feelings like anxiety and stress, guilt, isolation, uncertainty. These are real feelings that unfortunately can impact people for years, draining them of any sense of hope, freedom, or joy. Do the words and tactics of the bully fill your mind? Do, they, do you long to be like David and let the words of the bully just fall to the side? Or do you believe the lies? Scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit will speak truth to us. If you're feeling shamed, God tells us that you are loved If you feel insecure, uncertain, not sure of which direction to go, Scripture tells us that God provides a lamp and will continue to walk with us. If you've been on the receiving end of comments or actions from the bully, listen to this additional piece of Scripture found in Deuteronomy 31.6. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord, your God, goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. 
You know, most of what I have talked about up to this point has been about those who have been bullied. But today's message is also for those who have been the bully, who have been like Iliab. Have you been a bully? I have. When my wife and I married, it was a second marriage for each of us. Julie had a daughter and I had two sons. Into the step family, I tried to assert myself as the leader. Through my need to control, I oftentimes used the loud volume of my voice in an attempt to control. I was accused of yelling, but I thought I was trying to make a point and wrongly believed that the louder I became, the more I would be listened to and obeyed. I was a bully, and my words cut deep and impacted my relationship with my kids for years. I saw them pulling away. I saw the fear and anger in their eyes when I would confront them, and I realized that I had a heart problem. Because I feared not being in control, I tried to force the kids to respect me through intimidation. In my perfectionism, I also felt insecure and challenged when they didn't respond me or respect me as I thought they should. To change my behavior, I needed to change my heart. If there are times where you have been a bully, please listen to the words written by the half-brother of Jesus in the book of James. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? Desires that battle in all of us could include uncertainty in a relationship, issues of trust, feelings of self-doubt, questions if you're strong enough, smart enough, good-looking enough, Feelings that arise when the task before you leaves you uncertain, uncomfortable, or overwhelmed. When these thoughts exist, bullies will often want to hide their feelings from others. And in doing so, they come out in negative ways, often making somebody else their scapegoat. If you are a bully, remember that God loves you and desires to journey with you, bringing hope and healing. If you let him, he will guide you. The healing of my heart toward my kids took place as I began to release the control and address my insecurities. I prayed, had conversations with my wife. I prayed some more. I read the Bible. And through all of this and time, healing came to my heart. So whether you are a bully or you have been bullied, there is hope and security that is found in Christ. How? By accepting him as your Lord and Savior. You are promised the same spirit that guided David will come into you. How did David receive this spirit? Well, in chapter 16 of 1 Samuel, it says that after David was anointed, that from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. What is that Spirit talked about in that verse? Today, we refer to that Spirit as the Holy Spirit, that part of the Trinity that Jesus said would come on all believers. The Holy Spirit teaches, and reminds, convicts us of sin, and is a source of revelation, wisdom, and power, guides us into all truth, gives spiritual gifts, and more. David received this gift, not because he earned it, but because his heart was open to God. This weekend, many are going to celebrate the 4th of July, and they take this concept and this idea of freedom, that basically we are free to do what we want. And if there's something we don't like in life, all we have to do is change it. And that usually requires that we work harder. But in all that, the focus is always on ourselves. In my struggles with, in the chaplaincy position, at first I tried to change myself by simply trying harder. It didn't work. Thankfully, God placed people in my life who encouraged and supported me through scripture and prayer 
I was reminded that my significance did not come from others, but came from God. I learned through trusting the Holy Spirit that he would lead me and replace my insecurities with strength. God has a better way, a way that would truly bring you freedom and joy now, as well as the promise of an eternal life in heaven. True heart change is begins when you enter into a relationship with God. David had a heart toward God. What about your heart? Let me suggest some possible next steps for you. If you had used words to belittle, to control, or to shame someone, a next step that you should do at some point is to go and apologize. Take this step as soon as possible. Swallow your pride and just do it. And then also forgive yourself. Have you been bullied? Whether the words came to you internally or externally, remember that you are a child of God. His love for you was set before you were born. His words are true in Christ you are of infinite value. Words will hurt, but remember, just like David, your identity is in God. If you struggle in this area, either as a bully or being bullied, another next step is to take time to talk to someone. Bring all of the feelings and the thoughts that you have out to light insecurities, stress, fear, pray about them, and then talk to those close to you. If you don't have someone to talk to, contact us here at Jacob's Well, and you talk to either Tana or myself as part of the care team. If you think you need more, go and seek out professional help. But take this step to get these feelings out. That's when healing begins. And just a word to those who would be on the listening end of that. Please don't try and fix the person. Rather, listen, affirm their feelings, and support them through prayer. And the most important step, a step that I would hope that everyone here takes, healing comes through a relationship with Christ. Some of you listening today know about God, may even believe in the Bible. But if you want healing for your heart, the next step is to have a relationship with God through Christ. This relationship is not earned or achieved. It is offered to you as a free gift called grace, and it is available right now. Wherever you are, you can begin this relationship with God and receive the same spirit that was in David and begin the healing of your heart. Maybe you have received Christ in the past, but have drifted away for any number of reasons. Now is also the time to recommit to follow God. If that is a step that you would like today, please pray with me. Dear God, I know that my heart is not connected with you and I'm tired of trying to do things on my own. I believe that you are God and you love me. I believe that through Jesus, my sins are forgiven. And I believe that your Holy Spirit will guide me as I take steps to become more like Christ. God, please come into my life and bring healing to my heart in Jesus' name. If you have prayed this prayer desiring to become a follower of Christ, please know that this is not a journey to be taken alone. This week, take time to connect with God. Connect with people. Tell somebody about it. If Jacob's Well can be your church to journey with you, please contact us at the email address that you see. We would love to talk with you and follow up with you. If you've taken this step of faith now or in the past, your next step could be baptism. 
Baptism is a statement in which you profess that you have chosen to follow Christ. Our next baptism will be August 29th at our annual event called Splash. If this is something that you feel is your next step, please go onto the Jacob's Well website and begin the message, begin to look at the message that is there. Just a reminder that the rest of the month of July, each Sunday will be an outdoor service at 10 a.m. This service will also be live streamed. For attendance at these services, you'll need to bring your own chair or blanket. And we invite you to join the Jacobswell family during this summertime. In the event of rain, the service will remain at 10, but will, remove, will be moved into the worship center. Also remember that at the service on the 11th, that is next week, we have the opportunity to donate school supplies to the Backpack for School event sponsored by We Care Eau Claire. This is an opportunity to give supplies and backpacks to those who are less fortunate in our area. Let me close with Galatians 5.1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened by a yoke of slavery. On this Independence Day, I'd like to rephrase the last part of that verse. Do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of the bully. Let me pray. Father, thank you for the word of truth, which teaches us that you love us. For all of us who struggle with insecurity or shame, for those that struggle with the need to control or feel more significant, lead us to find healing through you. You are my fortress, and in you alone I find my purpose and being. Guide us all with the next step we need to take to become more like Jesus. Amen. Okay, guys, in just a minute, the worship team will lead us in our closing song. For giving today, we invite you to use our app or the giving page on our website. What I love about the app is it's so convenient. I just put in the amount and choose one-time gift or recurring. When I'm done, a statement pops up right in my email. It's super easy. But if you'd rather, you can always mail checks to our address below. Thank you for your faithful support of all of our ministries here at Jacob's Well. Your tithes, offerings, and gifts go directly to one fund, which then funds each ministry area, JW Kids, JW Students, Care, Worship, and our community share partners. Your commitment to giving is helping us rewrite our legacy for generations to come. For more on the heart of legacy, visit the Legacy Renewal page. Again, thank you so much.
Thank you, God, for picking up our pieces, Lord, for taking us for who we are in our brokenness, in our humanness, in our sinful nature, God, that you sent your son to die for us so that we have the opportunity to have an everlasting relationship with you. God, thank you for your grace towards us. Thank you for calling us your sons and your daughters, God. We praise you in your name. We pray. Amen. <laughs>